Okay, class, Professor Anderson here. Let's take a look at a classic example. We have a box that is tied to a rope. It goes around a disc pulley. And as the box falls, it's going to uncoil the rope and start to rotate the disc. And the question that we want to answer is, what is the acceleration of the box going down? Okay, so let's figure out how to solve this problem. And we'll give you some givens. Okay. First off, we're going to say that the mass of the box is m. We're going to say that the mass of the disk is also m. And the radius of the disk is capital R. Okay. So, how do we do this? Well, first off, we need to think about a free body diagram for this. So, remember when you're drawing a free body diagram, you turn the object into a dot. What are the forces that are acting on it? Well, we have mg down due to gravity. We have tension up due to the rope. Now, we know that the rope is going to pull on this disc and get it to start angularly accelerating. How do we deal with that? The way we deal with that is with, of course, torque. So if I think about the torque right here on the wheel, there is a tension going down, okay, and this, I'm just going to redraw the wheel here, and that tension acting at the radius r gets the disc to rotate. So let's see if we can make some sense of this. First off, we got to pick a direction here. So we're going to say that the positive direction is down because that's, we know that's the way the box is going to accelerate. If I think about Newton's second law for the box, the sum of the forces on the box has to equal the mass times the acceleration. mg is in the positive direction. t is in the negative direction. And all of that is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So, if we knew t, we'd be done, right? But we don't know t yet, so we have to figure out t. So to do that, we go to this picture. And we're going to say that the sum of the torques on the disk is equal to the moment of inertia of the disk times the angular acceleration. All right, what is torque? Well, torque is equal to force times lever arm. In this case, the lever arm is just the radius since this thing is acting at a right angle. So the left side of this equation just becomes tension times r. The right side of the equation becomes what? Well, it's a disk. We know that the moment of inertia of a disk is one-half mr squared. And now we have this angular acceleration alpha, and we got to make some sense of that. All right. Alpha is related to the linear acceleration because it's tied together with a rope. And the way it's related is A, of course, and R, the radius. And so you might not remember which way it goes. Does A multiply R? Is it A over R? But you know it's one of those, and you can really quickly figure it out just from unit analysis. So if I do A over R, then I have meters per second squared up there. I get meters there, so the meters cancel out, and I get per second squared, which is what alpha is. Alpha is radians per second squared. Radians is, of course, unitless. All right, so we can simplify this a little bit, right? If we divide out all the r's, we just get t equals one-half m times a. Look at that. r goes away with one of those, the other one goes away right there, the r's drop out entirely. And so now I can go back to this equation right here. We had mg minus t equals ma, so we get mg minus one-half ma equals ma. Okay, I'm going to add this to the other side, and I get mg equals three-halves ma. I can cross out the m's, and I'm done with the problem. I can write the result. A 
is equal to, when I multiply across, I get 2 thirds g. So it's got the right units, meters per second squared. It is less than g, which is good. We know this thing has to fall, you know, at a, at a rate less than 9.8 meters per second squared. Turns out it is 2 thirds. And if you go back up to this equation right here, and the tension was in fact zero, like the disk was gone, you would of course get A equals G. All right, so this is your answer. Depends on the object that it's rotating. In this case, if it's a solid disk, we get a particular moment of inertia, and that's your answer. All right, hopefully that's clear. If not, come see me in office hours. Cheers.